Kevin's been doing IT for 25 years. His past seven have been focused on automating networks and he's found his happy place with Ford's APIs. So let's, let's finish out the, this last chunk with APIs. Take it away, Kevin. All right, hey everybody, I know it's been a long day. Thanks for hanging in there. Uh, like you said, I'm Kevin Cools, Technical Solutions Architect with Ford. And I'm the last full segment of the day, but more specifically, I get to share with you how Ford integration can lead to even faster remediation of issues. Now, I may be a bit biased, but we've seen some pretty impressive capabilities of Ford in the session so far. And this leads to incredible insights in the Ford platform, but it's not just enough to have that data in one place. The next step is to get that data to the right people so we can you know, react faster, deliver apps faster, all with reduced interruptions. And this is at the core of what we do as IT professionals. So like a tree falling in the woods with no one to hear it, does an intent platform without eyes on it, make a trouble ticket. Well, it turns out it can. We've had methods to inform like email, logging and chat ops, but now Ford can generate a ticket directly from a failed intent with ServiceNow integration. So we chose to start with ServiceNow because it's, you know, it's the 800 pound gorilla in IT service management. It's where asset management, change management, incident management all live for a lot of our customers and imagine for you and your customers too. And we're gonna focus on two parts of that, creating tickets and adding context to tickets. And here's the, the scenarios we'll run through. We'll see how far we get in the time remaining. And uh, so first is that ServiceNow integration, reaching out proactively when it sees an issue. And secondly, how we can help the ops team with path information inside the ticket. And last, if we get that far, application dependency of a given network device. So first, you met us all, we're the Ford IT team, right? We've got Elio, the architect, defining our strategy. strategy. Uh, Glenn Scott, security network leads. They manage the infra, and then that leaves me. I route tickets where they need to go, and I clean up their mess. All right, so first scenario, Ford reaching out proactively when it gets a problem. So, and you'll see I have my uh, steps here along the side and I may even remember to sequence them. All right, so we, first we hop in to our instance. First thing we need to do is enable that service now integration. We go to settings, integrations, and it's just a simple toggle. We've got connection information here, you know, with credentials and whatnot and some preferences. So we can have the Ford automatically create a ticket in ServiceNow. So this means when an intent fails, it's gonna open up a ticket. We also have auto updates. So if the number of devices that are failing that intent or, or none of them and it's ready to close, we can go ahead and do that automatically. So let's backtrack. Now, what's an intent? We've been talking about a lot of things throughout the day. If we call back to Glenn's session, a path intent, the traffic path, you know, like traffic from A, to be with some specific criteria, that's really important that we need to ensure that we protect in our environment. And then there's the predefined checks and the NQE checks, like Jack just went through. Those are compliance based on some set of configuration and state data. All right, so we wanna add a new incident. We'll go, we'll do it within NQE. So first, we just gotta find a failed NQE check. Here we have this interfaces have descriptions, what that means is that all my devices on the interfaces that they have connecting to other networking devices should have a description. And that's really good thing for us all to follow. We can go ahead and just click add link. So we can create a new ticket that's the add side, or we can link it to an existing ticket within ServiceNow. And that's it. Click add. There's my ticket. But next, I want to follow the process of resolving a ticket. All right, like I said, I forgot to, to uh, sequence our tickets here. All right. So first we're gonna go into and find that particular query. I inserted an issue in an older collection so we can prove the whole process. So here we have BGB peerings not established. All right, that means that all the devices in my environment that are running BGP that have a peering should be in the established state. And if not, give me a heads up, all right? 
So this ticket was created. We go hop into ServiceNow. And it's been a while, hopefully it still has me logged in, great. So now I put my Kevin the Ops guy hat on. I get this ticket in my queue. What do I do? I look, all right, here's one of those new tickets from Ford, BGP peerings, sounds like a network thing. Drop that into Glenn, the network guy's queue. And so now I'm Glenn. I see this ticket, I say, all right, well, give me that report. I wanna see the live information of, of what this is complaining about. I follow that out. And it brings me right back to that query. I said, huh, we've got two peerings that are down. Well, this could be bad. This could be a site down. This could be lost redundancy. Or maybe it's just a new site that we haven't stood. Now, it really depends. I got to do some investigation and see a little bit more about this. And I can see, okay, my BGP summary. Oh, okay, it was never up. It's probably a new site, right? So now, as Glenn, the network guy, I can go ahead and resolve that, get a new collection, fix my BGP peer, and then, well, there we go. We can see that now the interface, oh, excuse me, we can see now that the BGP peering's not established query is all passed. Hmm, great. So what did I do with our ticket? Let's follow that history here. Okay, we can see, all right, it, it was automatically created by Ford, and then it was updated. We had no failures, so great. It was all closed, started the whole shebang from Ford externally. All right, so let's, let's think about how efficient that process now is. Something violated correctness in the network. Instead of waiting for some complaint or some cryptic syslog message, the ticket was created automatically. With the information we needed to assign, investigate, and resolve real quick. All right, so that covers the example of tickets from Ford. What about all those other ways? Both great tickets, right? We did the outbound part, built an integration inside the Ford platform reaching out to the leading IT service management platform. But what has Ford done to make it easier to consume? How can we present all the awesomeness of Ford into the platform of your choice? That's where the wealth of our API endpoints come in and the flexibility of platforms like ServiceNow, Splunk, Slack, list goes on and even custom code. Ford's API, it's, it's exposed in Swagger. So it keep, makes it easy to understand and easy to try out the different endpoints. Everything you've seen today, earlier today, all throughout the day, can be done or augmented by Ford's APIs. One of my favorite use cases is Ford as a source of truth. So if we think back to the way in the beginning with Elior, he was able to discover the whole environment and get all kinds of data pulled in. Well, what if we use that to true up our asset manager all through API or IPAN? Who knows the IP is in use better than the network itself, right? I've got all those ARP tables on every box. I can expose that through NQE API and true up my IPAM server. And I've been working on automation for quite some time now. Right? In fact, here's a younger version of me talking at a prior tech field event. And thanks Tom for having me back and Matt and actually Aaron, I think you guys were delegates then too. I was so excited about programmable interfaces to reach to your individual network devices. All we needed was some glue at the top, something to bring it all together, to abstract, to simplify, to express how the network is meeting the demands put upon it in a consumable way. Well, Ford is that glue, and in ways that I couldn't even imagine back then. It collapses all these individual devices, all types, all vendors, all versions, all exposed in this single set of APIs. But enough of me, back to our story. Let me quickly break down the two APIs in use in this next demo. First, there's objects or aliases, right? It's a pain to keep track of a bunch of IPs or ports and IPs, so we have objects to simplify that. So think about like a host group, say all the IPs for a given site for all the users 
instead of how to do you know path searches for each of them, I could aggregate that, make that a single path search. And also look at it from the other flip side. Like you have the destination ports and IPs for a service, like say Office 365, right? I've got a bunch of IPs, a bunch of ports. I can make that the own object that we call a header set and have a single query to validate all of those. And that's what we're gonna look at in a minute. And the other API is path, right? It's probably the most popular in all the endpoints. We've got customers using it to expose a custom portal, to extend path to customers or users that don't need access to the whole platform or a security operations center leveraging forward to understand the blast radius of a compromised device. So here we go. Second scenario, how can we make ops life a little bit easier with path information inside of a ticket? All right, so back to our situation, we've got Elio, that application architect, right? He needs to know, is this new application ready to deploy? Well, what would you do today? You'd probably bounce around through devices, make some trouble tickets and burn a lot of cycles. Well, here we're leveraging this forward networks chatbot going to reach out there for this particular path search. You know, the source IP isn't as important, but the destination IP and protocol, that's what really matters. It's is, can people reach that? And I've got two things to kind of define here. I've got this forwarding outcome. That's can the network forward that traffic from end to end and security outcome. That's the ACL. So is it permitted from end to end? Well, this is an exact use case of a payment processor customer. Instead of creating tickets, the wait for the network and security team to verify the pass, they get an instant response just like this. And they can onboard 10 times as many customers per week. All right, so now we know we gotta create a ticket for this. So we hop in to service now. This is still acting as Elier. He needs to create a new ticket. And this is a, a basic service now app that I built to represent uh, a, a trouble ticket incident response. So we say sites unavailable, you know, we could say blocked. And this is where we talked about that header set stuff. So if it's an application that's already in the network, right? People are not gonna you know the destination IP or port. So they would just be able to pick that. This one's a new one, so we gotta spell it out. And then, so we are gonna put in those, the same people we searched for prior. And the destination port. Admit that. All right, so now I'm back to Kevin, the operations engineer, right? We've all lived in network ops probably at one, one time or another, and we're used to the stuff here on the left. Not the most actionable information. Whatever the, uh, the person that created the ticket felt like putting in. Now we might have some AI to help give us some suggestions. We might have some old tickets to kind of look at. But in the end, we're probably passing the ticket around to subject matter experts to all prove the innocence of their portion of the IT infra. Instead, with some context from forward, we can skip that step, right? Remember that forward outcome and the forward security outcome? So is it denied at the firewall? Drop it in the security queue. Is the packet dropped or anything but delivered? Drop it in the network queue. Is it delivered and permitted I hope you're sitting down. It's not the network this time, right? So we can look down here at this denied request and I can say, all right, I can follow this link or actually change personas. I, 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 I gave this ticket to Scott, the security guy, right? He looked, okay, denied. I don't know all my ACLs on my network. I'm gonna follow this. It brings me directly to the forward platform. If you recall back, when we had uh, uh, Glenn showing us how we can do this permit all mode, where we can impact, influence that digital twin to permit all those firewall rules. I can see what I have to change. I can look at the device state. I can make my change. I can collect afterwards. I can validate my change. Oops, gotta select the right one first. And, I, and there you go, it's all resolved. So if I go back to my ticket, I can close it out, move on with my day and move on to the next thing. 